And I was like, what is this about? What? That's okay, though. For being so young, you're very, very smart. That's fantastic. Yeah. So keep, keep up the good work, man, and stay flat, okay? Okay, I'm a flat earther. Stay flat, okay? Okay, I'm a flat earther. rising everyone and welcome back to anti-religious scripture study with me karen b and just jack flat earth shabbat shalom shabbat shalom and i'm not bedridden <laughs> <laughs> i was just telling somebody jack. in the comments somebody in the comments asked if i was bedridden no um i i spend my indoor time in a travel trailer we had consolidated our um, our belongings years ago, 2019, I think it was. And then, um, uh, so basically I live in a, in an RV, a travel trailer. We do have a property, we do have a house, but I prefer living a condensed lifestyle. And the only place that I can set up for streaming is in my bed. So I have a folding 
laptop tray table and then my laptop and then my camera and microphone, they're all here. Um, but sometimes I do streams outside. I'll just bring my laptop outside, put it in a lounge chair and, and hang out out there. So no, I'm not bedridden for those who are wondering. Um, so don't, don't send da- donations to me because I'm bedridden, but you can send donations to me because you like me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Karen and I are dealing with, um, I'm sure like most of America's dealing with right now is unnatural weather we're <laughs> having. All of my water is frozen, so <clears throat> that's fun. <laughs> we were concerned for the ducks because the duck pond froze over, but they're still alive, thankfully. Praise yeah. God. So, yeah. good stuff. It's yeah. amazing what animals can survive. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in my dis- disclaimer really quick, and then we can chat. All right. To the religious, if you believe it's wrong to study scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then this stream is not for you. To others, if you are open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about scripture, if you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in scripture that may have been changed or hidden by religion, If you live according to scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then the stream is for you. We are looking at scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words, as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about... Uh, uh, we are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how religions contradict the scriptures. There you go. So this time of year is uh, painful for me, and it has been since like 2012, because when you look into the origins of things, origins matter. So the reason that we do what we're doing right here in scripture is because by the time that you get the English King James Version or NIV or NASB or whatever version, by that time, it's been handed down from person to person putting their own spin on it, their own perspective into it (coughs) and translating the scriptures. But if you look at the origin, then you can actually find the definitions of words. So a couple of days ago, we were a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking into the stones of the breastplate of the priests and they have their translated terms for these stones, but different translations may have different words for these stones. Well, how come there's, well, we don't actually know what this Hebrew word is, what stone is referring to. However, the root Hebrew word is the description of the stone. So they would call it according to its description. And the, the other thing is, is when you look into the origins of like, let's say for instance, the globe earth model, the origins of that is a philosophical statement. It has nothing to do with scientific evidence or even physical observations. It has to do with a premise of a of a, a philosophy that they can't be the center of the universe. And if that's so, and the perfect uh, geometric shape is a sphere and so on and so on and so on. It's all philosophical. But when you look into the origins of things, then you can remove those blinders from your eyes. The same thing goes for religion. At this time of year, you know, a lot of people are celebrating this winter holiday and they don't even know its origins are from worshiping the sun god of child sacrifices and rape orgies. The the traditions that we carry over into this time of year, uh, cutting down a tree, putting it up and decorating it within our house. That's in Jeremiah chapter 10 that says, don't do that stuff. You know, the, the songs, if you listen to the lyrics, like Little Drummer Boy is about the the men, uh, the priest of the sun God that would beat the drums so that your heart would not break as your child was burning alive in the hands of an altar. That's where little drummer boy comes from, but you would never think that from the song, but think about it. Like where, where is drums anywhere in the Christmas narrative anyway, but yet there's a song for little drummer boy. You know, we have mistletoe, which is obviously an initiation for, uh, orgy type scenario. You have a wreath, which is a sign of fertility. And then the red ribbon is the sign for the blood of the fertility. The wreath is a vagina. What did I say? What did I say? Fertility. Yeah, it's a sign of fertility. And then the blood of the fertility. Yes, it's the whole. Yes, sorry. 
And then the, the Christmas tree is a phallic <laughs> symbol. You, I mean, these are all things I found out back in 2012. So then when I go into the stores and I have to listen to this music and then in, um, you know, around here, they crank up the music during this time of the year. So it's a bombardment of torture for me. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> these are things that people find offensive for me sharing with them, but here's the point origins matter. You know, it's not, it's not okay for, you know, unless you want to be willfully ignorant, you have that choice. I mean, that that's obviously your free will. You can choose to be willfully ignorant and, I'm going to share this truth because it's it's a huge deception. And then, of course, it was also turned into a monetary, you know, flipping system. You know, people go in debt this time of year and they pay off that debt just in time to go in debt for the next year, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you give people material objects. And it, it's craziness. So anyways, there's my rant about this time. Of year. <laughs> yep. All right. And last week, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> last week, what happened? In the, in the, what, oh, we, oh. Uh, to verse 30, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Sorry, my rant threw everything off, I know, but <laughs> I, I had to say something because, yeah, it's. Well, it's that time of year. It's that time of year, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so Exodus chapter 29, we got up to verse. 30 you said right right and yes and so far the verses are talking about how uh aaron and his sons of the kohanim the the family of the kohen um had to do specific things to get ready to prepare themselves to go in and also um they were in charge of the offerings and so they were very hard workers it's not like they um do some you know, a little bit of book study and then do a sermon on Saturday. Nothing like that. That that's complete and utter nonsense. The way that, you know, priest head has been, um, hijacked and turned into this weird, uh, we are better than you spiritually speaking. And, you know, you have to check with us to see what is righteousness and what all that's nonsense. The way that the priesthood was is like, they're the ones who did the service, the physical service to prepare the connection between, uh, man and the creator. And they were intercessors. They were not uh, intermediaries. Okay. So um, they had to wear clothes that were a certain way that are ordained with gold, which is, you know, a resident, a resin, uh, a resonance uh, issue as far as I'm concerned, as, f as well as the smell, the aroma also causes a frequency as well. So that's my perspective on that. And, um, yeah, even their clothes, like, you know, there was a specific thing and they were, th it also talked about how the offerings, a portion of it was to be eaten with the priest and the creator. And that's what communion originally was. That's the actual communion. You share the offering with the creator and eat it like a meal, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Infected says, um, you're all teaching mystic Hinduism. Yeah, I don't know how that's possible because we're reading from the first five books of the Bible. Right. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. <laughs> there is a lot there is a lot of residuals throughout the cultures and it you know it's based on I'm sure off these of, things overlap, know, yeah. Everything comes from the origin of that area of the world. Mm -hmm. So there is residual practices that okay, so let me give you a for instance. In the first century. So this is documents that still are in survival. Okay. And of course, I don't believe the date. So first century is a misnomer. <laughs> Ignore me. But what they call the first century evidence is that the Egyptian, um, uh, what were they called? They were mystics. Okay. So, but they were called, uh, oh my gosh, sorcerers. Okay. So the Egyptian sorcerers were talking, talking about this thing of how um, they were adapting a new magic of healing and they were describing how they were watching the disciples of Yeshua and how they called on the name of Yehovah. <laughs> and that it says, um, in there, this is Egyptian writing, right? It has nothing to do with the Bible whatsoever. They have no belief in the, the Hebrew God. 
but they said that this is the method that the disciples get their healing, you know, by calling on this name. And they said that you're not supposed to eat pig when you do this magic because that invokes demons. <laughs> like there's this whole thing, like they have a misconception and they have this whole narrative behind why it works and what is dangerous about the way that the disciples heal people. So these residual things like, you know, I've, I've, you know, when I was a Christian, I would never read anything from Hindu writings or Buddhist writings or uh, Muslim writings or anything like that, because as a Christian, I was thought, well, it's very evil to even hear some of these other things. But I am now um, smart enough and educated enough to know that I can look at these things without like being, you know, swayed by every wind of doctrine. But I can look at the parallels between the religions and there's many, many, many parallels. It's just like, you know, people get frustrated <clears throat> when I talk about the translation of Torah, because this is what we're doing. We're going through verse by verse, chapter by chapter. I'm not just making shit up on the fly. I'm actually, excuse my language for those who are offended, but <laughs> I'm going, I'm going through this and I'm seeing, okay, these translations are purposely put there to show, to, to diminish what the scriptures actually say. It hides our divinity, our, our, you know, our connection to the spiritual realm, the, um, the spiritual aspects of this place, our connection to the creator, his name even, his name meaning existence. So everything that is, was, and will be is the creator. I mean, this is like similar to New Age philosophy because everything's connected within the creation, but then they worship this thing called the source. Well, I, I just say it's Yehovah, it's Elohim. You know, it's the collective consciousness that is the righteousness eternally existing as one. But when they have to believe in billions of miles of nothingness, of vacuum void, they're missing it. Because everything that is the creator is within this small realm that was created for us. You know, so it, it's, it will sound like other religions, but this is the thing. No religions are based on their scriptures. And I mean no religions. I don't care if it's Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, any any religion. If you look at the way that the religious leaders tell the, the, the little people, the laity, on how to perform their rituals and everything else like this, and then you read their scriptures, none of those things correspond with one another. It's always religion over the scripture, where you can, you know, uh, what's called gleaning, you can glean from the scriptures. And if it's not applicable to you, then you don't apply it. You know, it's like all this stuff that we're going through right now about the priests and what the priests had to go through and what they had to wear and all this other stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not Aaron. I'm not a son of Aaron. And even if I was a son of Aaron, I don't have a tabernacle. I don't have a temple to do my work. So none of that matters. But there are people who will usurp the name and say, oh, I'm one of the special people because I'm a Cohen. Well, that name means nothing because you're not doing the service. So it, it has nothing to do with anything. But there are things that are, you know, clearly in the scriptures and for our benefit that if we just, you know, read it and apply it, you'll understand it once you apply it. Once you start living according to what is written, you'll see what all this is for. Because you start feeling the connection to the creator and stuff just starts to work out for you. That's all there is to it. All right. Anyways, sorry for that rant. But yes, I understand that there is parallels in different traditions of Eastern religions because it's all from the same origin. <laughs> mm -hmm. And even <clears throat> residuals in, okay, Native Americans, they call the great spirit Yahuwah. <laughs> it, it's right there. I mean... They have other spirits that they worship, that, and that's the difference between monotheism and polytheism is you worship the, the creator or you worship a bunch of little things in between. And I choose to go straight to the source. <laughs> and the creator says that you should go straight to the source also. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Had to cause another rant there. All right. Thanks for that comment. <laughs> So, and by the way, I don't mind ranting. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do. So <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> so um, in Exodus chapter 29, there ta it's talking about, like, like Jack was saying, these specific <clears throat> family and their duty um, as far as all this stuff goes, right? And the temple. Yeah, and the apparel and the... And the um, what they wear. And... What, what they eat. I mean, it's all in there. Yeah. Okay. 
And so where did we stop at? 29? Uh, we're, we're starting 30. on verse 31. Starting at verse 31. Okay, so in, in 30, the priest from his sons in his place puts them on for seven days. And when he enters the tent of appointment to attend in the set apart place. And take we might we might as well go back to twenty nine to introduce thirty because that's kind of like out of context and you definitely don't want to do out of context. Oh, okay. And the set apart garments of Aharon are for his sons after him to be anointed in them and to be ordained in them. The priest from his sons in his place puts them on for seven days when he enters the tent of appointment to attend in the set apart place. There, now we know what, what it was put on them for seven days. <laughs> and take the ram of ordination and cook its flesh in a set-apart place. And Aharon, Simmer. Simmer? It's, it's actually simmer instead of cook. Okay. Well, they're not saying burn. <laughs> right. No, that's the point. Um, and and we, looked, <clears throat> we looked at that. Uh, it was either last week or the week before where they were translating it as burn and it's literally not it's cooking so burning means to burn up like like turn to ash mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not that and this is specifically simmer so this would be not just um uh thrown on the grill but like in water right simmering mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. seething is another translation in the king james version all right and Aharon and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tent of appointment. And remember that basket is, uh, I mean, the bread is like three different types of bread, but this one is the tearing bread. This is the lechem, the, the terrible bread. <laughs> the I terrible. hate terrible. So, <laughs> Tear oh, able. Terrible bread. No, it rippable bread. <laughs> <laughs> And they shall eat those offerings with which the atonement was made to ordain them, to set them apart, but let a stranger not eat them, because they are set apart. Okay, hold on a second. They shall eat... Oh, okay, you see how it's italicized? Uh -huh. <laughs> that actually tells you that they added that word. Right. Right. So it says, they shall consume all them, uh, action to them that atones or covers in them to refill or full action to hand of them for set apartness, holiness, uh, action to them and span or spread negative. They do not spread the consumption of all the food because it's set apart to them. So in other words, um, wait, what's this say? Stranger. But let a stranger let not us. eat them because they are set apart. Okay. From what I can tell, it's just you're not allowed to share them. I don't know where stranger comes in, actually. Um, did I? I don't know. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because can they you go are to holy. the Can you go to the parallel? To the what? Uh, HSBR. Stranger, uh, Vazar. You got to right click and... On the oh, you want me to, to to look it up? Okay. You could do it that way, yeah. H2114. So, spreading. Yeah. Scroll down. Uh, they're using number... Da, 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 Bazaar is 2114. Scroll down, scroll down. Looking for 2114 in the purple letters there. There it is. Strange, to be strange. One, one that is scattered. Okay, so... All right, so if it, yeah, so the difference is the the vowel of czar, vizor, okay? So if you go back to the, the 2114 there, if you look at the, in parentheses where it says ZWR, mm -hmm. um, from right to left, that's Zion Vav Reish. And if there was a Vav in the middle, I would have automatically changed it to strangers. And then I would say one who, who is scattered. Um, but because the Vav is not over in the translation, then it was translated as the root word, which is to spread or to span. 
Okay? okay. So it's because <clears throat> that missing vav that I translated that way, but sometimes it's vowel pointed with a uh, holum, which it's not there either. So I wouldn't have assumed stranger. I would say do not spread the food because it's set apart to them. That's what I have. That's what I have as a translation, and I stand by that translation. There you go. <laughs> All right. So that that's the thing. This is like you know you could assume stranger in there if you assumed a different uh, vowel placement, and because the missing vav is there, it is an assumption. All but right. what I'm saying is still true. You know, you don't you don't share it because this is specifically for those who are doing the um, the set apart. Excuse me, the set apart place service. So I stand by my translation. All right. But now people have seen in the audience how I got there, and they can make their own decision. You don't have to use my translation, mm -hmm. but I'm saying this is how I found it. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> And if any of the flesh of the ordination offerings or of the bread be left over until the morning, then you shall burn up what is left over. It is not eaten uh, because it is set apart. Burn is proper. <laughs> okay. This mm -hmm. is the actual translation burn up. Okay. So um, you don't carry it over, right? Because there's a fresh meat and bread coming in every day. You don't carry it over. Um, and that, that would also, you know, not just... Uh, uh, make it like, okay, so it's set apart so it's not being consumed after the fact, blah, blah, blah. But it also means that there's less possibility of any um, dis-ease from older food, right? Mm -hmm. So there, we're, we're going to see in the future um, of Torah that it says that if you cook meat, you can only carry it over for three days. On the third day, if it's not consumed, it's burnt up. Mm-hmm. And we know now today why that is, or we can assume why that is, is because it can make you sick if it's out right. for more than three days. Mm -hmm. All right. Two overnights is what I'm saying. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> and so you shall do to Aharon and his sons according to all I have commanded you. Seven days you shall ordain them. So you would do an initiation by doing a... Um, a week long hanging out in the holy place, mm -hmm. right? The set apart place. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after the initiation, and I think you're supposed to be 30 to be a priest. Um, but after that initiation, then you only have to do uh, that week of service every year. So you only have to do a week's worth of work a year. <laughs> and then you're taken care of for the rest of the year. All right. <clears throat> And prepare a bull each day as a sin offering for atonement. And you shall cleanse the slaughter place when you make atonement for it and shall anoint it to set it apart. Uh, yes. Slaughter place <laughs> being altered. Yep. For seven days you shall make atonement for the slaughter place and set it apart. And the slaughter place shall be most set apart. Whatever touches the slaughter place is to be set apart. Yeah. And the reason... You know, set apart is is better than holy is because it's not people people over spiritualize what it means to be holy, right? So if you're uh, how can I put? Oh, okay. Let me give you a modern uh, interpretation. So a doctor goes in and he prepares for surgery and he becomes holy before he goes into the operating room. Right. Mm -hmm. He cleanses himself and he becomes sterilized, set apart from anything else that could cause infection. Right. Right. Not that I condone modern medicine. <laughs> Just saying that. <laughs> right. But I'm saying that's a modern um, example of being, you know, set apart. This is more for uh, spiritual set apartness because we can be bombarded by the world. And after seven days of being separate from the world, you have a different mindset. Guaranteed. 100%. I don't care if you do it in the woods. <laughs> I don't care if you do it in a building. You know, you're going to have a different mindset by the end of that seven days. Yep. And this is what you prepare on the slaughter place. Two lambs, a year old, 
daily, continually. Prepare one lamb in the morning and the other lamb you prepare between the evenings. Okay, so this is between the daybreak and the mingled with darkness. Okay, so this is within the light time period. Dawn, daybreak, dusk, right? So Mm -hmm. between those times, two offerings. Because there are two parts of the day, just so like there's two seasons of the year, and there's two types of human beings, and there's the set apart and the the profaned, and there's <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of duality in scripture. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> and one and one tenth of an ephah, or flour mixed with one fourth of a hin of pressed oil, and one fourth of a hin of wine as a drink offering with with the one lamb. Right. Hmm. Yes. These are measurements, right? Mm -hmm. They're not measurements that we use today, but these are measurements. Right. And this is, we're basically creating a meal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, you know, lamb, oil, bread, um, uh, wine, and these things, that's a full meal. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it's not just stuff that's like, Oh, we're just throwing a bunch of stuff on the fire. No, the, you're creating a meal. Mm-hmm. All right. And, and by pre- the way, this is also to to further the point that there is, um, uh, you know, drinking alcohol consumption within the scriptures. I'm just saying. <laughs> lots of that. There's lots of that. So. And prepare the other lamb between the evenings, and with it prepare the grain offering and the drink offering, as in the morning, for a sweet fragrance, an offering made by fire to Yehovah. Right. And again, this is not a burning up because it smells good. <laughs> yeah. A continual ascending offering for your generations at the door of the tent of appointment before Yehovah, where I shall meet with you to speak with you. That I think is like super important. Right. So this is this is look, if you do this thing right at the appointed time in the appointed place, the tent of appointment. What, right. This is the Moed, the Moedim, like the appointed times of the year. Mm-hmm. If you do these appointments, then I will show up to the appointment, the creator, where I, the creator, shall meet with you and speak with you. Super important. Like if if I was given specific instructions, if you do this, I'm going to show up and talk to you. I'm going to do that stuff. <laughs> I don't care how much it involves. Mm-hmm. And there I shall meet with the children of Israel, and it shall be set apart by my esteem. The set apart by my esteem is um, not just set apart, but my continuous set apart in heaviness. In other words, when you walk into that building, you're going to feel the weight of the creator's presence. And I shall set apart the tent of appointment and the slaughter place and Aharon and his sons I set apart to serve as priests to me. Sign just popped into my head. What? Okay. And people don't spiral when I say what I'm about to say. When they walk into the tent of appointment, they feel the gravity of the situation. <laughs> okay. When Can you imagine if... We're talking about a high positive energy coming down to the earth. You would feel the heaviness of that flow. Or an increased um, charge, an an increased attraction. And you're wearing and you're wearing gold and you're you're within a electric field generating location. I mean, Mm -hmm. dude, like the heaviness of it makes a lot more sense when you think about it like that way. You know, totally, totally. <clears throat> and I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel and shall be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yehovah, their Elohim, who brought them up out of the land of Mitzrayim to dwell in their midst. I am Yehovah, their Elohim. And when it's repeated, it means pay attention, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just to let you know, I am Yehovah, your Elohim. Mm-hmm. And of course, that I am, okay? In this case, is the ani, not the hai. Okay, so when the Exodus three fourteen, I think it is, where it says, "I am that I am." Mm-hmm. 
it's a different term. So people will use the English translation and they'll say, see, he's the great I am because it, it would say, go back to KJV, you would see I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. You want me to go ahead, that? go to KJV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they would see I am the Lord and they'll say, see, that's his name. I am. Mm -hmm. But it's not even it's not even the same translation as in uh, Exodus 314. So if you look over there on the right hand side <clears throat> where it says I, me, my. In the middle there. Mm hmm. Here. Uh, down one one line. Oh. To the right. Oh, okay. See how it says a, a knee, mm -hmm. which is I, me, my. Now go to Exodus 3 and go down to verse, I think, 14. Uh, yep, there it is. And then if you look at the I am there, it's the Ahaya uh, right there. Yep. I exist. No, I don't, I'm not. I, I existing. Oh, here. Yeah, and the one above it as well. There's three of them in that verse. Okay. Oh, right here. See, I exist, I exist, I exist. Okay, so that is ahia. Okay, so ahia is not the same thing as ani. But they'll take the English translation to try to verify their their perspective in that his name is actually I am. Hmm. Which is not true. It's just a description of himself. Because... His name is uh, a, a compilation of Hayahove Yihye, which means that which is, was, will be. Okay. Everything that is, everything that was, everything that will be is the existence, is Yehovah. So I was just saying that because people will use that I am the Lord your God, and they use that I am part to try to refer back to this, but it's a different I am altogether in Hebrew. It's a different <laughs> translation. It's a knee instead of a ihye. Cool. So that was, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we're on 29. All right. I'll jump in the chat now. And I'm sure with all the ranting I did, there there will probably be some interesting um, arguments and complaints and stuff like that. I am going to start an anti-religious tincture study. <laughs> that would be awesome, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, we are freezing. Yes. This whole area is frozen, which should not be. It's abnormal. I am an atheist. Should I believe in God? Yeah, even atheists believe in something. They believe in scientism. Yeah. If this place was created, it takes a creator. <laughs> and if you if you don't believe that this place is created, then you only have one place to go, and that's the heliocentric model. So once you find out that the heliocentric model is nonsense, then, um, yeah, then you can finally see that the creator is... Okay. Da -da -da. I'm just reading through mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. What is scientism? That's when all it's the Jack scientists make up fake stories and everybody believes it. Yes. <laughs> scientism is where they claim science, but they have no science to prove. Because science is, you know, testable, repeatable, provable. It's not just fairy tale stories. When they talk about things from outer space, that's all scientism because it's not something that they've ever validated. It's just something they expect you to believe because they say the word science. Mm -hmm. um, and no, I'm not. I'm not uh, any religious affiliation, but I do um, have faith in the Hebrew scriptures. That is not to say I haven't studied the other ones. It's just the the um, the Hebrew scriptures, or AKA the Torah, and I'm not talking about the. Um, Genesis to Revelation, I'm just talking about the first five books, there are copies of no delineation in multiple cultures that have been preserved for thousands of years, more than any other uh, scripture in existence. And scripture does not just mean the Hebrew scriptures. There are lots of scriptures in the world. There's the Hindu scriptures, the Buddhist scriptures, the, you know, 
they're they're all scriptures as well because scriptures is a recording of writings. So. <laughs> was that Jack's daughter's white sweater that was found at FTBF? Flattoberfest. Oh. <laughs> you know how uh, Shamaya leaves her stuff everywhere? It It's possible, but there was a lot of little girls there this Flattoberfest, yeah. which was great for her. <clears throat> yeah. We have a bunch of Jack's daughter's things at our house, too. <laughs> Karen B, I have some of her stuff at my house too. That's mm-hmm. funny. <laughs> Plus, I have a daughter who is outgrowing stuff, and then my daughter, the stuff my daughter outgrows, I just give to Shamaya. So it's okay. Shamaya will get more stuff to leave around. <laughs> That's it. No questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got some some uh, Christian spiraling, but yeah, that's typical for people who are new to the subject. Hey, I was a Jesus freak in 2012 too. <laughs> and you say you say that I'm mistaken, <laughs> but have you investigated your own belief system to see the origins of these things, or do you just take it as a religious statement? The same as scientism. Don't believe just what you're told. Look into it. Try to try to validate your religion in the scriptures without using soundbite theology of taking verses out of context. A good key thing to do is if somebody you, quotes you a verse, read 10 verses before and 10 verses after with it and get the t- context of it. It usually changes the way that they're presenting it just by context. Hey, there's kingdom and context. Sean, Ruby. hey, Flim7, you should go to that guy's channel and watch some of his stuff. He's got good stuff. Make you think. Yeah, so, Flim7, are you a believer in the stationary plane of existence? And if so, then what caused it to be? Since you're an atheist. And I know there's going to be a lag, so. Mm -hmm. Probably tell me in 20 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'll tell you, though, if you go into a church building, you're not going to get the truth of the scriptures. You're just going to get soundbite theologies that we, we, because I was one of them, perpetuate on a regular basis just because it was handed down to us. The word tradition means put into the hands of another. It's all traditional. It's, it's handed down rather than self-investigation. I can't tell you how many people that I've talked to that have went to Christian theology and found out <clears throat> when they were in their Christian colleges, Christian theology, they find out the origins of their faith, but yet they have to keep toting the line because otherwise you don't have a job. So... Oh, he's not even a believer of flat earth, so, yeah. Well, first you have to investigate if anything you're told is a lie. If you believe anything from the news, if you believe anything from governments, if you believe anything from that, and if you can question those things, then you can question the thing that we can all test for ourselves, which is the curvature of the earth. It's eight inches per mile square, or the horizon cannot be any more than 1.225 miles times the observer's height in feet. If you use those two methods to try to test the earth for yourself and find out that it's flat and stationary, then you can figure out that there's a creator. And then where you go from there, that's your choice. I choose to go to the most verified ancient scripture, which is the Hebrew scriptures, which is the Torah. So anyway. All right. Not a believer in God, doesn't believe in flat earth. Yeah, I don't know how he ended up. Do you believe you live on a globe? Because you should you should look into that and ask why you yeah, believe that. Yeah, he says, that. sure, that's why I'm here, because I question things and I learn from all sides. Fantastic. That's so great. once you start investigating the Earth for yourself and you find out that there's no curvature, no spin, no parallax of the stars, no vacuum next to air pressure without a solid barrier, therefore the vacuum of space can't exist. When you start finding those things out and you find out that this place was ab- absolutely designed for us, created for us, 
then you have to admit that there's a creator. Mm -hmm. And then where you go from there, that's up to you. That's your journey. That's your decision. Um, like I said. Don't believe in a globe, just don't know. All right, well. That's good. Cool. I mean, that's that's a good start, but you can test to see that it's not a globe. Mm -hmm. And then if, there, if it's not a globe, then it was obviously designed because there's no other way that it exists. So, well, anyway. Even, even the whole thing of the globe coming from a big bang explosion from the singularity. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, the nothing to that's everything, like, yes. That's a fantasy story, too. Well, I mean, they even say that they're, that it's a fantasy story. It's just a, an equation back to zero. Yeah. That's that's how they figured it. So they have to assume zero in the first matter. That's the that's their point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of us all of us were where you are, where we where we question things. But just to give you some context, and I know people in the audience may have heard this story before and get annoyed, but since this is a newbie, tough. Yeah. Um, I actually came to the truth of scripture over religion because I tried to verify my religion and found out that it was not based on the scripture at all. And then when I did further investigation since 2012, so the last decade, looking into other religions, no religions follow the scriptures. It's all man controlled. But you can read the scriptures for yourself and find enlightenment, for lack of a better term, uh, that we are connected to a spiritual realm. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that we have dreams, emotions, uh, thoughts out of nowhere, you know, all these things prove that we are not in a physically, uh, 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 um, right. an only physical, you know, reality. <laughs> right. Things are manifested. So. All right. Yep. If you want to know the secrets to the universe, think in terms of frequency, energy, and vibration. Yes. Energy, frequency, 100%. and vibration. Yep. Zero curvature, zero spin. Yep. Um, quick prayer. Yehovah, I pray for the request of Valley Parks, and I pray that you just intercede on their behalf and that their restoration of their family be made whole. In your name, Yehovah, amen. All right. Amen. amen. Ooh. So, stay warm out there, folks. <laughs> mm hmm Yep. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us once again for Anti-Religious Scripture Study. Appreciate everybody being and, here. And the Earth is still, after investigation, flat. <laughs> yes. Is it a level and stationary plane with a small and close sun and moon? <laughs> All right. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Have a restful have a good day. Week. Restful day, yes. No Christmas. Bah humbug. Okay, bye. <laughs>